Hi there, my name is Tristan Glova. And I'm Kango Nagaoka. And we're both from here in Fairbanks, Alaska, where we're working this summer with the Fairbanks Climate Action Coalition through 350.org's Fossil Free Fellowship. Um, so we both grew up here in Fairbanks and, you know, started to do a lot of environmental work while we were in high school here. Uh, going to college outside of Alaska, we both really got involved in the climate movement through fossil fuel divestment, which we were able to plug into campaigns on our campuses. Yeah, and so I think both of us have really had life-changing experiences in the climate movement through divestment um, and doing campus organizing on our, our college campuses. Mm -hmm. Well, this summer we were presented with the opportunity to um, come back here to Fairbanks, our hometown, and work with a grassroots organization um, through the help of 350.org's fellowship program. And we, I think we both felt a need after working, uh, you know, and putting a lot of effort into campus organizing to sort of come back to a community, come back home, and sort of see what's going on on the ground here, um, and figure out how we can uh, come back with a new kind of lens and work on issues that are uh, sort of close to home right here. So I think that the work that the Fairbanks Climate Action Coalition is doing right now is absolutely crucial. Um, Alaska is really in a moment of crisis. We're facing the worsening impacts of climate change as the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. So we're seeing that in terms of worsening wildfires, uh, permafrost melt, and entire coastal communities that need to be relocated because of coastal erosion. And then meanwhile, we're also faced with this economic and fiscal crisis. We've been heavily dependent on the oil industry and fossil fuel extraction. And now that production is declining and oil prices have dropped, um, really our main source of economic uh, pr propulsion has, has stopped. So we're really facing bleak prospects, both on the climate and economic perspective. And so we're really at a crucial moment in Alaskan history right now. Um, a lot of corporate interests are trying to use this moment of fiscal uncertainty as an excuse to drill for more oil, like offshore Arctic drilling, um, and push for more dependency on oil. What the Fairbanks Climate Action Coalition is trying to do is tell an alternate story. You know, we need to create resilient communities that are adaptable to climate change. Um, we need to diversify our economy to create a more sustainable and equitable Alaskan economy. Um, so what the coalition is doing is bringing people together to imagine a new future for Fairbanks and Alaska. The challenge is going to be building that movement for Just Transition, and that's really what we've been in the trenches doing this summer. So the work that we're doing for the coalition is really helping to get the movement off the ground here. Um, the coalition is really only not even a year old at this point. So a lot of what we're doing is you know, supporting with a lot of the, the basic infrastructural stuff. We've worked a lot on uh, web and media presence, um, helping to build a website for the organization. Um, we've been doing work to get the structure really functioning in an efficient way, so doing support um, in terms of getting working groups running, um, and also doing a lot to build relationships throughout the community and really build coalition uh, along uh, throughout issues. Yeah, I think a really significant moment for me um, working with the coalition and coming back home this summer was attending a vigil for Black Lives in downtown Fairbanks in a moment where the nation was really hurting. Black communities everywhere were really hurting. and. Tristan and I w attended the vigil and there we saw a lot of the people that we worked with in the coalition, former teachers, people we just knew in the community. Um, and so that sort of really made me think that coalition building, strength, strengthening our relationships within the community is really where we need to start if we want to achieve a just transition in Alaska. Another incredibly powerful experience was that we got to attend the um, gathering of the Gwich'in Nation last week um, up in Arctic Village, Alaska. This is remote rural Alaska, off the road system, um, and we were there to learn from the Gwich'in people who have been fighting oil development on the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for several decades now. That's where the uh, caribou herd of, you know, the porcupine caribou um, have their young and raise their young um, and the the Gwich'in people um, 
survive from uh, their subsistence relationship to these caribou. So I think what was really was really powerful was just starting to to understand the ways in which up here the issues of oil development and fossil fuel extraction really are also linked to issues of of colonialism and and these histories as well. Mm -hmm. Alaska is really a place where you can't really separate social justice, environmentalism, um, indigenous rights, economic justice from each other. They're all intertwined and we all have to tackle this together and build a relationship so that we can move forward. I think what I really want to bring back to our divestment campaign at the University of Denver is this more holistic sense of what we're really fighting for. I want to challenge the group to think more about you know, how do we root ourselves in relationships how do we root ourselves in place and be a better part of the larger DU community and also the Denver community? I think that sort of sense of rootedness is something that also um, gives a sense of actually how much is at stake in this work. Um, so seeing the way that communities here in Alaska are fighting against the fossil fuel industry and fighting for climate justice really, um, I think, drives home the urgency of the work that we do in a way that's kind of hard to see if you're just doing the work on campus. Mm -hmm. I think both of us, after spending time back in our hometown, back in Alaska for a summer, we really feel the need that Alaska needs us and needs the momentum that the climate movement is bringing. And we really want to continue our work here and come back, bring the knowledge that we've gained from working on campus campaigns, and really root we ourselves here, work for a better future for Alaska. I think that that opportunity to get to build those relationships and lay a foundation is absolutely crucial in that. Um, and I think that those are those relationships that are going to be the basis for, for all the future work that we try to do here. Do the Fossil Free Fellowship. You should do it. <laughs>